Welcome into Post Game Live brought to you by New England Ford Dealers. The Patriots beat the Steelers 17 to 14 and Mac Jones finishing with 252 yards, a touchdown and an interception in today's matchup. Michael Holly, Tommy Kerr, and Ted Johnson, Matt Castle, Amina Smith here with you and I have to brag. Of course because you do. I predicted the exact score that the Patriots would win 17 to 14. Holly, I, I told you 30 points was just not in the car today. You got to start listening to me. I should listen to you. I should listen to you more often. I'm just happy that I predicted a win. I got a win finally. I'm on the board. And, and I would say, in all seriousness, the Patriots needed to win this one too. Uh, we said in pregame it was validation Sunday. You can talk all day long about how you're getting better and you're a couple of plays away and you're even from a yardage standpoint. Guys in the locker room, as these guys know, former professional players, they, they need to see some victories or they stop listening to you. They stop trusting your, your plan. They lose faith. The Patriots got some faith back today. They finally played well on the road. Their last road win was in Buffalo in that windstorm in December. Mm. So this is a significant win for the Patriots. Most of us predicted the Patriots would win this game, but to see it happen and the fashion in which it happened, specifically, huge improvement on the offensive line. Yeah. Outstanding. I'll go as far as to say outstanding, especially relative to last week. Offensive plan, sustained drives, opportunistic defense. These are all the check marks that they had to get in order to gain traction going into two difficult games. So really, you know, hats off to them for the 180 from the open. You're trying to sneak that game ball, that Matt yeah. Patricia yeah. game ball for me. It's not happening. Oh, yeah, I called it already. I already got my already fix called. in today, Colin. I got the alliance. I, I got already, my fix in today. But. Well, it, it, but you just said it, though, Matt. I mean, I think the, the – uh, the old line came to play today. I mean, the Steelers, they, when they when they were blitzing, they didn't blitz a ton, but when they did, it seemed like the Patriots had them picked up. And even when they did their four-man rush, I didn't see a lot of leaks from the offensive line. And the offensive line, let's face it, in week one and all through training camp has been the story uh, just about how leaky and how just disconnected they've been. They were very well connected today, and I think that was the key. The quarterback didn't play uh, his best, but he made the plays when he needed to. And that is a huge, huge win for their psyche. If they started this season off 0-2 with all the things that preceded these these two games it would have been a, a long long week but they went and they got it uh, against uh, you know a Steelers team that was coming off a big win from week one and I also think it's the balance that this offense had today right they start out with throwing the ball with the passing game they got people and Mac Jones into rhythm a lot of that had to do with the offensive line the protection but they also were able to counter that with the run game and the run game anytime as an offensive unit you get the ball late in the game and you can finish the game with the ball in the hand don't give your opponent another possession that that's huge, and that's a huge confidence builder for this team because they haven't been able to close out some of these games. And the way in which and the fashion in which they did it today is a statement game for this offensive line, and hopefully moving forward, they can build off this. The Patriots were able to finish with 124 yards rushing at half. You know, Matt, you talked about them weaving in that run game, but current, just how important was it for the Patriots to weave in that run game in that second half? That was the most impressive part to me. And, you know, we stood here or sat here and stood out at Gillette Stadium and talked about look this wide zone stuff it's not working it looks worse and worse every time mm -hmm. they close the game with two Damian Harris runs on wide zones those stretch plays we see Mac Jones have to get way outside and get the handoffs to Damian Harris those were great and some of the third down conversions were great too but if I'm a Patriots fan right now I'm really maybe doing a victory lap on behalf of Matt Patricia and the offensive pivot because they executed on some of the things we said they looked friggin doomed on yeah, we didn't see this coming. The way, okay. Not in this way, yeah. Not, right. not like this. Look, they were favored. Uh, for, for the gamblers out there, shout out to you. Mm. Uh, the Patriots were favored by a couple points, and they won by three. But what you saw last week, some of the breakdowns at critical times against the Dolphins defense that the Patriots were supposed to know. And even without uh, T.J. Watt today in Pittsburgh, you said, okay, if the Dolphins can do that to the Patriots, and the Patriots can't figure this out, there's going to be a problem in Pittsburgh, and they really cleaned it up. There weren't a lot of free releases uh, from the Steelers. We kept talking about Brian Flores and what kind of effect he would have on the Patriots offense. You didn't see any of that today. They did an excellent job. I want to ask Teddy, how long was this week for the players and the coaches after an 0-1 start? Oh, it, was, it's, it was really long because you got to really factor in, I think, Tom, what preceded that. The training camp, I, I just thought these guys mentally 
were going to be exhausted before the season even started. And then you have the, the performance in week one like they did against the Dolphins. Not a good showing. And so this week, to me, I just felt like probably if I'm a player in that locker room, Tom, oh. the weight of the world. And oh, just, you just like want to win yeah. worse than anything. So this week, I think more than any other week, they probably felt the pressure. And you know what? To their credit, they went out and they answered. And they, uh, you know what? They ran it down their throats in the second half. And it was interesting to see the, the kind of the just position, just position between the first half and the second half, how they played the second half versus the first half. They kind of got into that zone run stuff a little bit more as they were already lathered up in the running game from the power, the power game they were doing in the first half got them lathered up. And so they went to the zone stuff in the second half and had more success. Maybe that's how you introduce it is later in the game when the teams maybe not expecting it. You know, we were questioning buy in in the pregame show. Let's take a look at the emotion towards the end of this game. All smiles. Mac Jones is all hyped up. Bill Belichick is out there giving yeah. hugs, Matt Castle. I, I mean, how does a win like this change the emotion inside of the locker room, especially with all the questions surrounding this team, specifically the offense coming into this season? Yeah, they needed this, right? It's what we talked about. It's confidence. It's buy-in. It's guys in the locker room looking at each other and saying, hey, we've got a belief that we can go out and beat a good team on the road in their stadium and opening day stadium for at, at the Steelers. And anytime you can do that as a team, that's a big lift, especially with all the negativity that's around this team, particularly the offensive unit. They've been going through a lot. They've been answering a ton of questions. And look, not a lot of it's been positive. So now that they've got something to hang their hat on and say, hey, guys, we can build off this performance. We got better in the pass game. Our offensive line played better. We were able to implement the run game, and we were physical, right? And they showed that physicality out there today. So to me, that's a huge building building block for this unit and this team moving forward. And although this game I felt like wasn't a make or break game for the Patriots, especially in week two, but Ted, just how important is it for this team knowing that they are not going to start this season 0-4? <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, it's huge because I think this is one of the bigger storylines of this team is just the mental psyche of this team. And, mm. you know, you're, we, we were talking about it all training camp, and we saw it in that last week against the Miami Dolphins, the head coach Bill Belichick kind of talking in his post-game comments and even throughout the week in ways that we've never heard him talk. Yeah. In just ways yeah. that you're kind of like, that's not the Bill Belichick I know. He's talking as if, you know, he's he's really trying to build these guys up. And, he, and, and that signals to us former players that he's maybe not happy with where his team is. But when you go out and you have a win like this, this this gives everybody confidence and it, a lot of the kind of stuff, the chirping that maybe some of the news that's been coming out this week with uh, some of the guys on the offense, the side of the ball, that starts to quiet down because those guys that were maybe making noise during training camp, not being happy, they silence themselves because they don't want to be the distraction if the team's going to start winning football games. And, you know, those business owners, when you make that first dollar, you frame it and put it on the wall. <laughs> yeah. The same thing with Matt Patricia. He finally got something, and maybe this is not who the Patriots are for the rest of the season, but they did establish an identity. They tried to hit Devontae Parker again on a big plate. It, it, it amounted in an interception, but when they really needed to, they went to Jacoby Myers, yeah. who came up with some big catches, mm -hmm. and they went to the running game to kind of go into a four-minute offense, which turned into a six-minute offense to close out the game. So strong running game, Jacoby Myers. It's a little bit of an identity that we didn't know. What, what the hell was the identity last week? Now we know it's a better picture. And I would say this real quick, Matt. Yeah. Just one thing that's different from last week this week is the Patriots had a lead. The key for the Patriots, yeah. I hate to say it, but they are a team right now. If they play with the lead, mm -hmm. they can start doing all the things that they like to do. If they don't have the lead, then they're a different team. And I'll say this about Patricia, too. What I liked about the way in which she formulated this game plan, the passing game took what the defense gave them, mm -hmm. right? And so Mac Jones, he, while they had great protection, look, there was a lot of guys. They knew that they had to attack the interior part of this defense because it was a lot of zone, a lot of guys underneath, and they gave them the opportunity to make that. So it wasn't like they were trying to force things, right? They were taking advantage of it. They hit some crossers deep with the high-low patterns. They hit a lot of guys underneath. And that was just a good formulation, good play call, and how they constructed this pass game. I thought it got Mac Jones in a rhythm early. And so there, there should be something to be said about how they performed just overall offensively in the pass game because I, I didn't see that last week. And we, we all hit the panic button on Matt Patricia, mm -hmm. except for Ted Johnson wasn't here in the pregame show, but we all, <laughs> hit, we all, we all hit the panic button on Matt Patricia going into this game. But Holly, what grade would you give Matt Patricia in week two of the NFL regular season? You got to give it up. Uh, like, if it's a home game, B. Road game, B+. Plus. Mm. You, gotta, you know, go up a little bit on the road. A lot of good things there. I thought they could have uh, – I keep looking for more from Devontae Parker. I don't think they figured out how to use him yet. But, but overall, 
I think just pretty solid, uh, solid game plan. And that's from the game planner, Matt mm -hmm. Patricia, the offensive line coach <laughs> with Billy Yates. That's probably an A minus. Okay. Yeah. Man, last think, week yeah. it was a D. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this week it's an A minus. That Zero is where sacks. he got his biggest jump. Zero sacks that was today. one of the interesting things because Billy Yates was on the sideline throughout the game today. Previously, Billy Yates had been up top watching the first half and would come down to the sidelines previously. Yates is the offensive line coach assistant to Patricia. They coach it together. So whether Yates took on a bigger role with the offensive line, I don't know. But that was the role that Patricia had on the sidelines previously. But you look at Patricia freed up, and one of my favorite plays today, they had a third and seven draw that picked up a first that was down. Andre. It was a gutsy ass yeah. call by Matt Patricia. It was. And it was a smart call, and it picked it up. Those are the things that, look, he's going to have some bad days. They still only had one sustained drive for a touchdown in each of the two games. But relative to where it was last week and relative to the criticism that we all dispensed and people across the NFL dispensed, I give him an apple. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. I think they probably have to. You know what? This is why. This is a lot of pressure. This is why it's not the apple. This is why it's not the apple. This is why it's the B plus. If, if we want to uh, pick some nits here, there was a, a, a key, key play. Okay, first drive of the game. They're rolling. Well, right. Nothing's it's, going wrong. Yeah. It's a delay of game. Delay. Oh, yeah. And the reason, and I'm not going to say it's a delay of game. I think there may be an issue with. Coach to quarterback communication. Yes. Seems like the plays are getting in late. There was, was another timeout, timeout, timeout that Mac Jones had to use. So right before delay game. They Frick. still need to get that part ironed out. But again, it's, it's a lot better than it was last week. Give them that. If Billy Yates was down on the field the whole game yeah. this time, let's keep him down on the field the whole <laughs> yeah, night. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely. the best this offensive absolutely. line has looked. All summer. It was was today against the Steelers. Mm -hmm. And you had Nelson Aguilar right before the half. We talked about how that changed the momentum for this game going into halftime. But, Matt, how did that change things for the Patriots coming out of the half, knowing that they got that touchdown, they had the lead, that they had some momentum to finish out this matchup? Well, it's huge. Anytime you go into halftime with a lead and you make a big play, like we said, we haven't had a lot of explosive plays down the field where guys just go up and out-compete somebody and make a terrific play. That was a huge play right before the half. And then you know that you're coming back out at halftime getting the ball. That gives you that little cushion. It gives you that confidence. And you go in at halftime like, hey, guys, now we just got to, you know, continue this momentum and go. Now, they weren't able to do that consistently throughout the third quarter. However, this play right here is a huge momentum changer going to halftime. And, and that's the type of plays that just – you know, gives everybody confidence. It gets the defense excited. It gets the offense excited. And so th those type of plays, you know, you, you can't say enough about things like that when they pop up and they happen and it gives everybody confidence. Does, it, does Aguilar look different this year? Yeah. Yes. He looks yeah, more agile. Yeah, exactly. He just looks more current. athletic. Yeah. Yeah. People. It, it's, so whenever yeah. you see Nelson Aguilar making those kind of plays, who typically doesn't make those types of plays, it gives the team even more juice. It's right. funny how reminiscent this week that play was compared to the Miami play with Jalen Waddle last week. Mm. They scored, mm. they let up a touchdown with 17 seconds left in the half. Yeah. Right. That bites them. They're down 17 nothing today. They get this play and they're up 10-3. But one thing about the playmakers we've talked about in the past, look, the Patriots don't have sudden guys who get open in small spaces. So if they don't do that, they have to make some really good body control plays. And we saw a few from Jacoby Myers today. We saw the Aguilar one. And we saw some good runs, too. So mm -hmm. they're at least letting some of their athleticism show, even if they're not the most explosive, dynamic offensive yeah. players.